Hello everybody, it's DTG Slayer here. Today's video, we're gonna be doing something different. I'm gonna show you guys a really good strategy to beat Icy Ridge Jack. So you know, Jack, he always comes back every freaking key area and dude gets stronger every area. So we're gonna be running Serpent Chain, get up those shields, walls, and we're gonna also be using Taunt because his first star doodle always sets up shields well. So we can use Taunt to get rid of that option. So, and uh, besides that, after we do that, our own shielding walls, we go right into Monkey to basically break walls. Even though it breaks our own walls, I'm pretty sure, but it still gets rid of theirs. So, in a way, we do that. We got Jaglark to set up vines to get rid of half the doodles that are higher stats and probably way faster. And we're going to be running Giga Chad to get rid of one of his other doodles to absorb his hits. And Vigimantes mainly our physical attacking sweeper to come back and win us the game. He's basically my wing con. As for torture, he's mainly there just as a second shatter user. You can use other uh, doodles, but I mainly use them for specific reasons. Besides that, I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And this strategy took me probably two attempts, but trust me, it works and try to give it a try. So like I said before, starting off with Serpent Sheen, always knowing what this thing has, it has Kona Cold, it has Psycho Force, and it has Crystal Wall and Magic Shield. As its item is running uh, blueprint so it's basically gonna keep on doing that over and over so most likely we're just gonna go ahead and just do the same thing against it so we could be ready for it as for the rest of his team it's pretty horrifying if this guy knew how to switch with this team but you know kind of called magic moves and gonna squat to serpent gene <laughs> it's funny how he got the froze but you know that's fine totally fine either way you look at it this, uh, the Artifixie ain't gonna go for attacks. No way. So, as it goes for Magic Shield, totally fine. The point is, we're trying to make this thing want to hit us now. Even though we just got hit again with this, the ice. But that's totally fine. We get our healing back. And now, what do we do now? Is the question. Uh, it's simple. I go straight into Klingatang. I'm... I'm basically voicing a pre-recorded video so of me doing this, but sorry if it's a little slow on it. But yeah, we're going into Klingadang here. So basically, we're taking pretty much any hit that the thing throws at us. We're running Curse Cloak to basically take any hit this thing has. And we're just gonna spam Shatter, mainly. In a way, you could use this strategy as well as to set up Vigimanti in a way, if you ever want to try that. Or you can set up vines right here too, at the beginning, and just get rid get rid of Jalark. Jalark right there. I would recommend probably having Jalark be the first thing you do as a way to, because they don't have a way to get rid of hazards. So, but casually at this point, you could try a bunch of strats with this setup. You could do Vigimanti or sorry with Jalark. But what I did here is I just stayed in and just kept spamming Shatter. Because it, the more I'm, it's most likely it's gonna want its walls up, and I didn't want it to get any walls up, so yeah. As for as my Lursa, basically he's running B Arena, so basically both sides have Bs. We're totally fine with that. We got Triumental Slash Expert, Slash Expert, so I mean, I could go into my Bronze Oach here, but knowing that I know what item it has, it has Weird Jelly as its item, so. If I went for this, either way, it still would get the plus four. Well, plus two, I meant. An attack and magic attack. So pretty much it was plus four. But, you know, that's totally fine here. So we're gonna basically just stay in. Really, we don't have a reason to keep this guy. Oh, no, we ended up living anyways. And got a crit with Shatter. That's fine. Um. Okay, so here's a Vicent. Abyssin basically can just kill me now. I don't really exactly need Klingatang anymore. It did its job. I don't really technically need it. As for what I'm going to go into now, I think I'm going to go back into Serpent Sheen to set up Magic Shields. Because I technically don't have a reason for it. But at the same time... Oh, before I mention, when I, do, when I was doing this clip, I wasn't running uh, Enchanted Emerald on Jaglark, which is why it outsped me. I could have ran Ice Candy Cubes as well, but I completely forgot about it. 
If you if I were to run Enchanted Emerald, I would 100% outspend and got vines up. Which I'm re recommending you just do that instead of what I was running. But still, it's fine. Getting Surf Machine back up to full HP is totally fine with it. So we're just going to set up Magic Shield because all it has is magic moves except for its signature move, which is a physical attacking move. Well, I don't exactly know what his other moves are. All I know is it's Kona Cold, Tsunami, and he has his signature move, Abyssin. Oh, I don't know what it's fully called, but it's a light move that has a chance to always increase a physical attack boost. Here it goes, Abyss Breaker, basically. Which you just seen it happen. So, basically, Moss is my way to deal with this option. So, as it basically goes for it all the time, maybe, or it goes for something else, we're going to go ahead and go for Enlightenment. Good thing that Abyss Breaker doesn't always happen, so you shouldn't be taking as much as big damage from it. So, given the opportunity now, pretty much we're just going to stay in and just spam Enlightenment for probably a couple turns. Because Kona Cold ain't going to do nothing. Tsunami ain't going to do nothing. Tsunami is going to be probably boosting us because we're running... Uh, as the move we're running, we're running... Stormwater... You could try using Storm Surge with this set too if you want, instead of running Tsunami. Because then you would be able to outspeed half of almost everything on this team. But you know, it, it's totally cool what I'm doing right here right now. I'm just basically just providing time to set up. Because this next doodle is something that a lot of people always lose to sometimes. And you're about to see it in a minute. Just casually, this is that was the rest of the boost I needed. Oh, and I got an extra boost, so I'm at plus five. Plus five moss. So this life sap 100% kills this thing. Four times dead to it. <laughs> Even if I did go for a life sap right now, it probably still would have lived. And now, as for Pompa Boar, yes, this thing is a big magic wall. And we're about to see why exactly I went for all those life saps. And the main reason why I went for all those life saps, because I'm pretty sure that this thing is Cursed Cloak. That's exactly how it... Oh, never mind, actually, no, it's Kranz, Kranz, it's Kranz. I'm completely lying on that. I had no idea it was Kranz, but... I was thinking at first that it was Cursed Cloak, but this thing's magic defense is pretty nuts. So I'm, I'm just going to assume that it lived a plus 5 from Moss based on that. But, who knows, really. I mean, this guy is running level 60 doodles. Jack always comes back with all this stuff. So, as now, now we're in something, we're in scary territory now. Extremely scary territory. So, why I say that is because this apparently is his Awaken for this area, and that's Awaken to Flays. As for what his move pool is, he's running Earthquake, Beastal Wrath, Raging Bonfire, and I'm sure he's running... I haven't... I was really thinking that he was running Venom Bite, but I don't really know what his last move is. I try to see if he had it, but I don't think he... I don't think he really does. So, you know, just going for Chip. I mean, practically... Bronzoach really doesn't... I don't really need Bronzoach. They need to get Bronzoach... Uh, fucking... Oh, I meant to say Earthquake. That, that would be pretty good, actually, if Bronzoach had Earthquake. But, you know, there goes Bronzoach. Goodbye. Totally fine. Did its job. Lasted me a turn and got me some chip. And as for Vigimante, I can take any hit. I know I can take any hit from this guy. Even if it goes for Beastle, I live. If it goes for... I'm just thinking, hoping that it doesn't have what I think it has, and that is Venom Bite which is its only effective move on me, and it goes for Earthquake. And like I said before, we take those. With that killing, the main thing that scares me, we get that plus two, and we get rid of that um, the plays. And as his last doodle, it, you already know it's Merigrim. As you know, Merigrim's actually pretty slow, and knowing that Vigimante is way faster than this thing, this thing completely dies to this. So Vigimante takes the win with the Fin Slash. Even though it's higher level, Vigimante still outspeeds it because I'm running a lot of speed on this. And there we go, we take that win and we beat Jack. Jack again. I think his name is Jack or Jake. No, it's Jack. Okay. As we defeat Jack for this area, 
it makes us way more clear <laughs> to never fight him again for until the next key. But I hope this strat helped, and later on, we'll, I'll do another one when the next one comes up. Or make a team on this, but still, hope you guys enjoy. So, how did you guys like the video? What if you did a hit that subscribe button or, stabbed it or slapped the bell icon whenever I ever upload another video? Besides that, we are finally back, for real this time. More videos ha later this week. Other than that, Slayers Unite, see you in the next video. Peace.